A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. I would say one of the things I get most joy from in life is seeing a good bit of town planning. I find it hilarious, some of the stuff you see. This included, Mount Vesuvius is over there, but for some reason this bench is facing this wall and this horrible, decrepit fence. Move it round, get rid of the fence, and then we're talking. Somebody must have thought this through. Uh, anyway, I should probably stop moaning because I'm on the Amalfi Coast shooting for the week. Uh, so yes, I'm here in Italy, and today what I thought I'd do is uh, just shoot around Sorrento because this is where I'm staying. I've got my Leica and we've got about 12 hours until sunset. So we'll see how we get on. And uh, before sunset, if there is one, I'm expecting a couple of heavy downpours, according to the forecast. So that might be fun too. Also today, just shooting with the 50 mil because, uh, well, the 28 millimeter is broken. I've used it half a dozen times and it's gone all wobbly, which apparently can be a problem with those Elmerit lenses. Not great, but uh, it's gonna go back and I'm not gonna use it in case I make it worse before it does go back. So yeah, we're shooting exclusively with the 50 mil today, which shouldn't be a massive problem Terrible. Uh, on the basis that a few weeks ago in Abu Dhabi, I shot basically 90% of the time with this 50. It's a bit more of a challenge in Italy, I find, because everything's much closer together. So I was anticipating using the 28 mil quite a lot this week, but uh, it's not to be. So we'll see how we get on. I, um, as you'll know if you've watched this channel for a while, I don't really class myself as a, um, a street photographer. You know, even in places like this, I'm not massively into the idea of taking photos of just people's expressions and stuff like that. I'm more looking for a combination of nature, the buildings, and the people. But um, I've heard a term recently that I hadn't heard before called camping. I think lots of photographers talk about it, where you basically stick yourself on a street corner or somewhere for a period of time, and you just wait to see what happens. Maybe it was Paulie B's channel, fantastic street photography channel on YouTube, definitely check him out. But yeah, I, I've been doing that here for the past half an hour or so, maybe a bit longer, and it's yielded some interesting results. We've got a, um, a combination of mopeds. There's a tiny little Fiat down there. There's been people milling around, there's been fishing boats. I think it's been quite productive. And some terrible photos in there as well, don't get me wrong, but I think maybe some nice ones too. Uh, I have spoken about focal lengths, particularly normal focal lengths, kind of 50 millimeters, 40 millimeters, that kind of thing. I've spoken about them way too much on this channel uh, because I love them. I really, really love them. But as I suspected on that day in Sorrento, 50 millimeters was quite hard work. And one of the reasons I suspected it was because I've struggled with a 50 in Italy before. Places like Venice, where I've gone to try and convey a sense of place, but the streets are so old and narrow that it's difficult to do that with what is quite a, a narrow focal length. And 50 is, is described as a normal focal length, but it is, I mean, it's narrower than a 35 or a 28 or a 21 or wider focal lengths, basically. 
And normally on days like that, what I'm aiming for is a photo every 20 minutes, half an hour, and not a portfolio photo, but a photo that's got elements of things that I like within it. And that will keep me interested for another half an hour, and then I'll find another one hopefully, and that'll keep me going for another half an hour. And if that doesn't happen, if I go like an hour or an hour and a half without seeing anything of interest, I tend to start noticing like coffee shops and pastries and other things that aren't good for me. And slowly but surely I lose interest in taking photos altogether. And I was perilously close to that happening that day because I was shooting with a 50. So uh, I will take note of that and make sure that I never go out with just a 50 in Italy ever again. And I mean, I wouldn't have if the 28 wasn't broken, but I've replaced that and I'll talk about that in a future video. Anyway, I didn't want to be defeated. So a few days later, it was nearly time for me to go home and I had a couple of hours before I had to be back at the airport. And I decided to go back to the same area in admittedly better light to see if I could do any better. And I think I did. I think I've got some of my favorite shots of the trip. So this is how that went. This is kind of nice. The uh, the light is starting to hit the back of this. Um, I was going to call it a pickup truck. I don't know if it qualifies, but you've got the boat behind it as well, and then obviously all the usual stuff in the background. This is kind of nice now that uh, the light is hitting the pedalos, but it's just horribly weighted as a scene. Oh. Blue car's coming. Here might be a help for the horrible waiting. No, don't go left. Don't go left. Please go right. Please go right. That's it. That's it. Still got the cruise ship in the background, but uh, in terms of waiting, that was a big help. And I didn't have to wait. W-A-I-T. Again, I like this, but uh, I'm just waiting for something to way down the, uh, the left side of the frame. Maybe a boat or a bird. That could work. I'll tell you what, this is where a rangefinder truly shines because I can see exactly when the birds are going to enter my frame. No, I really like that one. I think it's one of my favorites. Not a coincidence, I don't think, that I was drawn to the coast and the more wide open areas of the seaside shooting with the 50 versus the narrow streets where, uh, yeah, I did struggle a bit. Also, I'm not gonna talk too much about the Leica in this video because I've done that loads in other videos. I'm sure I'll do it again in future videos. But one thing I've noticed so far shooting with this camera is that uh, it's nowhere near as discreet as I thought it would be. Uh, when I was researching M cameras, one of the things that people like to talk about is how it's much more discreet than, say, shooting with a 24 to 70 on a big mirrorless body. And I think there is an argument to be made there because, um, well, it is much smaller. Even with a relatively big M mount lens, uh, this is a lot smaller than shooting with other mirrorless systems. However, because it looks different from other mirrorless systems, you have non-photographers notice it purely because of that. And photographers, I think, notice it because they see it as a Leica and uh, you don't see that many Leicas and therefore it piques curiosity. So uh, it's not as discreet as you might think. Even if you cover up the red dot, which I've done a couple of times, people still look at it. So yeah, so if you're gonna buy a camera like this for discretion, my experience so far is that it's pointless. Luckily I didn't, I bought it for other reasons that I've already spoken about. But uh, yeah, that was something that I noticed in Italy. Anyway, hopefully that was fun slash enjoyable. Uh, I would like to go to places like that in future and do workshops, uh, but I don't really know how they would look. I'm trying to think about how I would structure them 
in such a way that didn't mean we were all just lined up shooting the same thing constantly because opportunities to do that are limited in sort of towns or more built up areas where you're not just on a mountainside lined up with a load of tripods. So I'm thinking through how to kind of bring that together in future years, but uh, if you've got any ideas, do let me know. Uh, also, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So as I've done a few times in the past, I've put together a page uh, which features some of my favorite photos from this video. And it's one of my favorite things to do because I can sequence the images exactly how I like and I can be in full control of how people see them. Which of course you're not if you're just putting your photos on social media and people are distracted by reels and adverts and that's not an ideal way for people to see your work. And it's for that reason that I think a website is one of the most important tools in a photographer's toolkit. Now if you want to check out Squarespace you can do so by going to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're there you'll find that there are loads of templates to choose from. Mine is called Wells, I've been using it for the past five, six, seven years, something like that. I love it. And once you've picked a template, and there are lots that are recommended for photography, but it's really just a case of drag and drop, playing around with sliders, filling some text boxes, and before you know it, you've got a website that you love the look of and you think does justice to your work. So whether you're looking for something like mine, which showcases your portfolio, as well as my online store where I sell my presets, my books, my prints, or maybe you're wanting something that resembles more of a blog, regardless, Squarespace has got you covered. And so as I say, you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com, and after that, if you would like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James, and you'll get 10% off of that first purchase. So uh, a big thank you to them for their continued support of this channel and to you for watching. Uh, and if you're not subscribed already, please do. And uh, I'll see you next week when we won't be in Italy. We'll probably be somewhere a lot closer to home. Man, it'll probably be raining. Definitely be raining. <laughs>